from the Lincoln Journal Star, this is the Life in the Red Podcast with Luke Mullen, Amy Jeff, Brent Wagner. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Life in the Red Podcast. Luke Mullen today joined by Amy Just and Brent Wagner, uh, who both do a great job, may I say, of covering the Nebraska volleyball team. And that's why we're here today. Volleyball only episode uh, here to go over Nebraska start of the season and, of course, break down this recent three to two win, uh, a thriller over Creighton. Um, but going big picture, both of you, you know, you've been following along this team uh, for for throughout these first seven matches of the year. Well, let's start with the first six before we dive into this uh, this Creighton one. Um, big win over Kentucky to start the year. The loss to SMU a week later. Just what do we make of the start to the season for Oscar Volleyball? Uh, definitely like a work in progress, which is what you expect. Um, I think a lot of people thought they would just kind of naturally pick up uh, from last season, but uh, each each team is its own team, especially when you add new players um and you know other teams are are getting better so uh showed a lot uh, last night in the win um starting to get the balance that i think they're going to kind of have to have and uh, defense was a lot better too so uh they play they play a great schedule and um you know they'll certainly improve you know what what you're thinking now is you know it's a uh, what do they play 14 it's like uh, you get 16 weeks until you get to a regional and that's that's when you want to be uh, playing your best. Yeah, this this non-conference slate is really difficult. Um, I expected there to be some bumps in the road just because I think there's a lot more parity in the sport now. I think that you're seeing teams that you don't otherwise expect to be really good, um, teams that aren't ranked, having more upsets um, around the league. I mean, you look at, this, the state of volleyball as a whole um, within the first couple of weeks. And, you know, you look at, you know, Wisconsin's start to the year and Texas's start to the year and Minnesota's start to the year, um, teams that you expect to be really good um, being tested really early. And I think you're starting to see that, not just with Nebraska, but everywhere. Absolutely. And I I guess it was really that, that SMU match, you know, not just they lost it, but I mean, the fact that they got swept in it how much of that was a wake up call maybe for this team and how much of it was maybe just a normal just a normal non con loss yeah it was it was just kind of a combination of everything i think uh, they played a lot of matches there um and they just they didn't have that muscle that you that they had last year where when it's a close set you know we can go on a 3-0 run we can go on a 4-0 run um, so they're trying to kind of figure that out. Yeah, it was it was shocking. I think they won, you know, SMU won like 10 of 11 rallies there. And, and it was, that was probably what the most, one of the more stunning parts. And defensively, we're a little slow and um, they let SMU uh, get, get, get momentum at home. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was obviously a, a big one, but they responded, uh, came back, won a couple of ma- matches after that one. Um, and, and this was the big one, you know, that they were looking forward to. A uh, big top 10 matchup with in-state rival Creighton. Uh, Nebraska's ranked number five. Creighton ranked number nine. Uh, it was a five-setter that, that Creighton won. Uh, Nebraska won, sorry, over Creighton, excuse me. Uh, now 23-0 and all-time against the Blue Jays. Um, a lot to talk about about this match. Uh, we'll dive into it, but just starting with the first two sets, which I think were, were very different from the rest of the match. Um, Nebraska really dominated early, uh, as you mentioned. I mean, the blocking performance in that one. Uh, was really impressive. Andy Jackson just lights out early, and the defense was really leading Nebraska early in this one. Yeah, it was it was definitely uh, the best they'd played. Uh, I haven't seen John Cook get up, up from his chair that much uh, this year. Just he was so excited about how uh, defensively they were lined up, their blockers were lined up, they were disciplined. You could tell they had, you know, done the scouting well, and the players were locked into the scouting report. Uh, Harper Murray was really good early, getting some. Uh, out of system kills and went in some long rallies. So yeah, it was it was really really impressive how they played uh, those first two sets. Andy Jackson, man, she is electric, and she came out and really set the tone. Um, just physically, uh, Ken, one of our photographers, has this photo of her. I, I believe it's from one of the earlier sets where her hips are over the net. It's, it's one thing to watch her live, but it's another to see like a photograph of her at her apex of her jump. Um, she has really become um, just a dominant force for Nebraska. And 
he's incredibly fun to watch. Yeah, I'd, I'd say as somebody who follows Nebraska volleyball a little bit more casually than both of you, not not going to all the matches, you know, seeing every set, just turning on uh, this this game and, you know, seeing the way that she played in those first two sets, I was just like, man, Nebraska's had some really good middle blockers. And I was like, she's going to be right up there. She is a special talent. Um, finished with a career high 15 kills, hit 379, also had those eight blocks. And yeah, I mean, it, it just seemed like Creighton, the Creighton offense was was really struggling with that block uh, to get those clean swings off early. Well, things kind of changed finally in that third set, uh, which was completely bonkers, a wild one. 33 to 31, Creighton won that one to avoid the sweep back and forth. Those points, you know, when it finally got there to set point, match point, I mean, the intensity of that volleyball was something to see. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, each, I mean, there were rallies where each team would have two digs that were just amazing and uh, yeah, out of system kills, which, you know, you have to have in a match like this. And uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. There were multiple points where Nebraska could have put it away. There were multiple points where Creighton could have, you know, saved it. They eventually did, but you, you just never knew what was about to happen because it was just so tense, so deadlocked and, yeah, the the energy in there was insane. Yeah, and for Nebraska, it was it was certainly a unique situation. Uh, you get Laney Choboy there in the front row. Uh, they're out of substitutions. I mean, how did you think that they kind of handled the stress of that moment, you know, being not in your normal offensive setup that you want to be in? It happens. It's happened before. Um, happened against Oregon. Um, that's, the ri- that's the risk that you run when you want to either run a 6-2 like Nebraska did in 2022 or when you want to rotate in your incredibly talented defensive specialist in the back row, you're only allowed 15 substitutions per set. And when you have a match or a set, excuse me, that goes uh, into extra points, you run the risk of that. And that's what happened. But, you know, Lainey, you know, she went up. She was jumping. She's, she's got hops. Yeah. She, she, yeah. she you know, she did uh, what was asked of her. Granted, you know, she's 5'3". Uh, so, you know, she's not quite like Andy Jackson on that one, who is 6'3". But, you know, she did her job. And, you know, no, they didn't end up winning that set. But, I mean, they they did what they could in that in that set. And they extended it for as long as possible. Yeah. I mean, that the end of that set was just such a battle. Uh, that was really fun to watch. But... I think it was kind of, you could see the Creighton offense picking up, um, especially, you know, they they started going to some more of the tip shots instead of going at the block every time. Um, Norris Sis ended up finishing with 24 kills. Eva Martin had 17 kills as well. And, you know, the the way the volleyball is with, with the runs the teams can go on, uh, that four set, I mean, Creighton just had all the momentum. What what was Nebraska maybe lacking in that four set? I mean, what, what kind of stood out to you in that? I think you got to give some credit to Creighton as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... That setter is, uh, I mean, she, she's probably one of the top five or six setters that Nebraska will go against this year. They get a lot, she, she gets them a lot of good attempts. I mean, this probably makes Nebraska's defense early in the match so much more impressive is because, you know, they have a really good setter. Um, just They just probably didn't have the balance and consistent from all their pin headers that Nebraska did. Yeah, I mean, Creighton's a top 10 team for a reason, right? Um, they're not going to go down without a fight. Um, and I think that there are two of the better players, um, you know, in the nation. It wouldn't surprise me if any number of them earn, uh, an All-American honor, you know, this season. They just, they're really, really good. Um, you know, you saw that against, uh, when Creighton played USC earlier this season. I just, they're, they are ranked where they are for a reason. And so I expected a hotly contested match and they ended up getting it yeah i mean nebraska knew they were going to get tested that's why those those first two sets was maybe a surprise uh, how strong they came out but again you know the the flips and the ebbs and flows of momentum in this match uh finally goes to that crucial you know deciding fifth set and obviously there there were a lot of points still there but i think it was those first three points nebraska they go out to that 3-0 lead i mean that was creighton just couldn't come back from that lead nebraska shot out to yeah nebraska played i mean pretty Pretty amazing in that fifth set. 13 kills, no serving errors, which is, you know, something that had hurt them earlier in the year. And yeah, it was very impressive how they played in the fifth set. Yeah, and and going for those kills, I thought Harper Murray really took over with several really powerful kills in that one. 
Uh, she finished with 16, and Lindsey Krause had 15 kills, Merritt Beeson 14 as well. And I mean, we, we mentioned what Andy Jackson did, but just the all around effort from the Nebraska offense and Harper in that fifth set was impressive. Yeah, one of the things that really stood out to me was just how balanced Nebraska's attack was. Uh, Bergen Riley did a really good job at spreading things around and making Creighton uh, have to adjust. Um, it's really difficult to try to game plan for multiple pin hitters who Bergen can go to at any time or Bergen herself um, with her very aggressive nature at the net too. So that just makes them even tougher to try to stop. Yeah, so... I mean, it was, everybody did it on offense. Everybody did it on defense too. I mean, Lexi Rodriguez had 21 digs. Everybody was digging. I mean, Creighton was throwing a lot of good swings at them. Uh, and then we mentioned the block, obviously Andy Jackson, Rebecca Alec was a big part of that. Uh, it was just, I mean, it, it was a really tough test, but I thought it was a, a good day for the Nebraska defense overall. Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, just everybody who played in the back row had multiple digs. Yeah, it was it was not a game. I mean, there were the, the volleyball was coming at you. You had to dig it, uh, get your head in the game, and and certainly it was intense uh, volleyball action. But I mean, big win for Nebraska in the books. Uh, let's go a little bit big picture now after this six and one start. Um, talking about the rotations here, um, the transfers: Taylor Landfair, Layla Blackwell. They've not played a whole lot. Just what do you think of the way that John Cooks integrated them so far? Oh, I think you'll still see him. I think, you know, once you, especially when you get into Big Ten, Big Ten play, you know, if you're in the second set and uh, Krause's hitting less than 100 or Murray's hitting less than 100, you know, it's pretty pretty amazing that you can look at the bench and say, let's bring in the Big Ten player of the year and see what you can do for us. And uh, they're, they're making a lot of changes with, with Taylor Landfair, and it's it's taken some time. But, and, you know, they're, Obviously, hitting is a big thing, but I mean, we're talking about her blocking too and serving and all that. So um, I, I think you're still going to see her play a role at some point in the season. Have you been surprised or, or do you think this may be expected that it took them a little bit of time, uh, given the amount of talent that Nebraska already had on the roster to get those players in the rotation? Yeah, uh, if you've been like when you listen to John Cook and, you know, he's asked about Taylor and he's asked about Layla, like, he has high praise for them, but he's also honest in saying that, yeah, like they're learning what it means to play Nebraska volleyball. And so from that aspect, I wasn't super surprised that they've slowly been integrated into things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, after this one, uh, two upcoming matches this weekend, uh, Nebraska will host Arizona State and Wichita State. Uh, if you had to identify which of those stands out as more difficult or maybe there's a... a an opposing hitter, opposing player that Nebraska fans should watch for. I mean, just what stands out to you about this weekend slate, Brent? Yeah, these are, these are definitely challenges again. I mean, this isn't... Nebraska fans should probably get used to five-set matches with the, with the schedule they have. Um, you get Stanford later, Louisville later, Penn State's playing really well, Wisconsin's playing really well. Uh, we're not playing... Have a couple losses, but, you know, they got a freshman setter, they got a freshman libero. Uh, there's, when, when they get that offense running, they're still going to be pretty good. Um, Arizona State's a top 20 team. So yeah, they're, I mean, Friday night, you could have another four or five set match. Mm -hmm. And after those two, as you mentioned, uh, some big, big top 10, uh, top five nationally volleyball, uh, the national volleyball scene will have their eyes on it. Next Wednesday, uh, number two, Stanford goes here to Lincoln uh, to play Nebraska. And then Nebraska will be on the road as well, uh, going to Louisville. Some history with those programs, some Nebraska connections as well. Um, just looking at, I mean, these four matches that are coming uh, over these next two weeks, just what are you watching for? What do you expect out of the Huskers? Yeah, clean play, you know, as mistake-free as you possibly can, not shooting yourself in the foot, you know, still being aggressive at the service line, but not um, getting into your own head. Um, no short serves, right? If you want to be aggressive and it sails long, you know, you take those, but being as aggressive as possible and, you know, trying to win the long rallies. Absolutely. Well, be interested. Can they get through it unscathed? Do they have a loss? Do we have any predictions? What do you, what do you think for the next two weeks? Um, it would not surprise me if they drop one or two of those, but I still, even if that happens, I don't think the sky is falling. I think that you want to learn your lessons now and, if that has to come in a loss, it comes in a loss. Um, 
I think that if you have to take one, John Cook would much rather, he hates losing. Don't, don't get me wrong. But if you have to take one, you take it now as opposed to in December. Yep. Brent, how about you? What do you think about the next two weeks? Yeah, it's gonna be really tough. Uh, Louisville obviously has a great outside hitter. Their middles have been really good. Um, I think there's a lot of there's probably a lot of resemblance between what what they're trying to do early in the season and what and what Nebraska is trying to do. You know, they're trying to try try some things out. So uh, you know, when it comes to uh, conference play for them and, and Nebraska as well, and then you know, Danny and John are are both trying to make it. So when it, when they get Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight, what's what's our team like then? Yep, season long journey definitely, but big matches, big tests for Nebraska coming up and. Uh, of course, for all you volleyball fans out there, make sure to stay tuned. We'll be back here uh, in two weeks' time to break that down, talk all things Big Ten volleyball, looking ahead to Nebraska's conference slate. Big year Big Ten volleyball again on the way. Uh, Arizona State and Wichita State coming up this weekend. Uh, that'll do it for today's Nebraska volleyball episode of the Life in the Red podcast. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Thank you for listening to this week's Life in the Red podcast. Our theme music is composed by Sasha Indy. The stories continue on journalstar.com.